All right, now let's get ready to move into our discussion, where, like we said at the top, we have Mr. Tom King. And you may know his writing from such amazing things as Sheriff of Babylon, The Vision, Omega Men, and the current Batman DC Rebirth series. Let's welcome Tom King to the Geek History Lesson podcast. Tom, thank you for joining us on Geek History Lesson. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. You're one of my uh, favorite um, fan media dudes. I don't know what to say, but man, I appreciate you going way back. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, now, I want to talk about the Riddler. Our episode's all about the Riddler. And I want to ask you, as the Batman writer, where do you think Riddler ranks in Batman's rogues gallery? Would you put him near the top or, or in the middle? I think he's a list. I mean, it depends. It depends on how you do it. I think Joker's a plus i feel like joker stands above the rest as sort of his own list mm -hmm. and then there's the tier below the joker so if you if, if you kind of joker's a plus the a-list ones i think he's in the a-list he's there with penguin uh riddler and maybe raz al ghul I mean, you know there's a small, small list there now all of batman's villains uh, some people say are part of his psychological makeup what part of batman's psyche do you think the riddler represents he's the he's the brains he's the great he's the world's greatest detective um, he's the guy who's just as smart as batman the riddler is just as crazy as batman the penguin's just as desperate and the riddler's just as smart catwoman's just as passionate and dr freeze is just as obsessed with puns <laughs> mr freeze <laughs> Let's talk about the Riddler and his interactions with other villains. Now, you are going into this big arc, the War of Jokes and Riddles. What is it like writing the Riddler, interacting with other characters like the Joker? The Riddler has been the big surprise for me going into this because I kind of – I mean everybody knows – what the Joker is or what you can be. And you sort of, you try to find something surprising about him. And I think I found that. And so I was like, okay, I, I kind of know where I'm going with the, with the Joker. And, and, but then I sat down to write the Riddler and I was just surprised at, I don't know the way to say it, but how evil he is. <laughs> I mean, like how scary he can be and how, um, visceral, like all this stuff I was thinking I would only get from the Joker. I could also find in the Riddler. I, I, I was shocked by that. Um, cause I honestly, growing up the Riddler was not, I mean, I love him and he's some people's favorite character, but to me, he always seemed to sort of be like Joker light. Like, you know, the Joker had mysteries and the Riddler had mysteries. I, I sort of didn't, if, if I was, if a story came on an original Batman TV show and it was a, it was a Riddler episode, I'd be more happy if it was a Joker episode. So I, I kind of always felt he was a little bit Joker light and, or diet Joker or something like that. Uh, and then I started writing him and realized that, that, that a riddle wasn't a joke, that these were two different things and that, that the joke, a joke is chaos. It's, it's the unexpected, even the, the, the most, the, the simplest joke, you know, why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? The, the, the funny part about that joke is that you expect it to be a joke, but you give him a straight answer, right? Like that's what makes it funny. And it's, so it's, so it's unexpected, but a riddle solves the thing. It's a problem. It doesn't. You know that, that that comes to something. So it's the exact opposite. It's order. It's you know there are problems in the world and there are solutions to them. And then I started realizing, like, oh, okay, so he's just he's fat. He's that he's that fascism and and the Joker is anarchy. And they're they're actually they're not just you know um, one's crazy and one's a little less crazy. One's obsessed. One's a little less obsessed. They're just polar opposites of the same sort of continuum. That's interesting. I never thought about the idea that the uh, yeah the riddle is a joke that is answered. Yeah, that's what a, that's what a riddle is. A riddle. That's why you don't laugh at a riddle. You're always going, "Huh? Well, I guess that solves it." Or it's a joke. You're like, "Oh man, I never thought that would be the thing." So, why did you decide to introduce the Riddler into the book now? Can you tell us a little bit about your development process for the next arc, the War of Jokes and Riddles? Why issue twenty five? I mean, there's like I, there's meta answers and there's story answers. So the story answer is probably more interesting than I'll give you the meta one. Um, so the, the the story answer is that in twenty four. Um, Batman proposes to Catwoman for a number of reasons that the whole first year has been leading up to where he's sort of in this emotional moment of his life where he's searching for happiness, searching for something that'll give him joy. And he believes Catwoman's the answer. And before he does that proposal or before she answers, he says to her, there's one thing you have to know about me. And this is inspired by Tess and Durville's or every other, um, 
Victorian novel you've ever read was like, I have a dark secret in my back. But, but you, you don't, you don't, you think you know me, you know about my parents, you know about the sort of darkness in you, you think, you know about everything I've done. That's why we love each other is because we know everything about each other. But there's one secret I actually have kept from you that goes back in my past that you have to know before you say yes or else your yes won't mean anything. You have to know that I'm not the man you think I am. And so the war of jokes and riddles is sort of his confession to Catwoman. The whole thing is his, is him telling this story. And then she has to decide if what he did, um, still makes him someone she wants to marry. So that's, that's the in story part of it. What's the meta reason then? <laughs> the meta reason, uh, I think there's, there, there's two things. Number one, DC is going into this metal crossover event, which is this amazing involving every single character in the DC universe and Scott Snyder and James Tynan and Greg Capullo are just blowing people's minds. And I don't want people to sort of look at the Batman in that book and be like, Oh, that's just, you know, the crisis Batman. That's not the real Batman. Um, cause I love continuity and I, and I know that feeling of looking at an event and not feeling it's a real event because you're not seeing it in the main book. In the main book. But yeah. I, yeah. But I also don't want to give you eight crossover issues. I think you, you, I think people would be a little frustrated for that. I mean, that there's, there's a responsibility in the main Batman title to be a, well, to, to first of all, be a, something on the newspaper stand that any kid can pick up and say, Oh, I want to follow this one story. And number two, to, to be the biggest, best story it can be. Um, and so th those two things combined, I was like, well, I'll do a story in the past. And that way the Batman that's happened, the Batman that proposed the Batman in the present is the Batman that's in Scott Snyder's. That's the continuity for looking for in continuity, Batman look no farther than uh, the metal event. And if you're looking for the continuation of the story of Batman, you can look to Batman. So it, so it sort of accomplished that thing for me. And it, it, let me tell a great story without breaking continuity. We're, we're roughly in the Batman past. Is, is this a, like a year one-ish time tale or, or whereabouts does, this, does the War of Jokes and Riddle take place? It takes place a year after the bat crashes through the window. So year one has happened. Zero year has happened. Um, Batman has sort of established himself. He's had a number of successes. He's fought his entire Rose Gallery. He hasn't found Robin yet. I like to say it takes place between um, Haunted ha <laughs> uh, between Halloween and Dark Victory. In sort of the lobe sale universe. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Was there ever any um, consideration to uh, titling this the Year of Jokes and Riddles, so you could get on that <laughs> year, the the year <laughs> legacy? <laughs> this whole thing, you know, it started as I bef like four or five years ago when I was first breaking into comics. I, um, uh, but it was a different editor who's no longer at DC, and I. I had done a little issue for him and he sort of said, Oh, thanks, but no thanks kid. But you know, keep in touch. And my version of keeping in touch was to send him a pitch every single Thursday. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and he would, you know, every like fourth one I'd send in once a month, he'd be like, thanks kid. You know? And, uh, and it's, and this, this was one of the pitches I sent where I was just like, you know, just, I was like Riddler versus Joker. That's obviously something someone's ever done. That's such an obvious idea. And, you know, I checked it and I was like, no one's ever done that. That's so weird. So, and, and, I, and I called it in that document, I called it the War of Jokes and Riddles. I, don't, I like that title. So it's, this has the same title that I ghost pitched five years ago. All right. Well, Tom, I also have some questions from you, for you from our patrons over at patreon.com slash Jawin. Uh, Drew Marks asks, has the idea for a Riddler ever becoming an anti-hero been thrown around? And if so, or if not, do you think that would be an interesting story to tell, like the Riddler as a hero? If you read the Dini Detective run, which is yeah, one of my favorite runs of Batman, yeah, he does it there, yeah, and and you see him sort of trying to reform himself and trying to become Batman, and it's 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 really great. So I would I would look there to it. I I mean I think there's someone could do just a brilliant Riddler series of of a bad guy trying to be good and failing, sort of an opposite of Breaking Bad, you know, sort of a Breaking Good. Mm. Uh, I, I think that's. That, that that's something to, to look at because I think if Batman didn't exist, the Riddler might be a good guy. He's, <laughs> hmm. I, I think, I think the idea of, he has sort of that thing that Lex Luthor has with Superman where if Superman didn't exist. I think Lex would be okay. Yeah. Where, 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 where Riddler's kind of like, as long as I'm the smartest guy in the room, I'm cool with myself. But as soon as I'm not the smartest guy in the room, I get insecure and crazy. And I think that's who Riddler is. Like he just can't deal with the fact that he cannot defeat Batman. I mean, that, that, that's what Jokes and Riddles is about. The idea that both Joker and Riddler have come to the conclusion that there's one thing they can't do is defeat Batman. 
Sean Craven asks, what do you think the Riddler's desired endgame is, and what would he do with himself afterward if he ever reached it? I think the Riddler wants to solve the question of what is the meaning of life. I think he wants to solve the ultimate riddle. And I don't and if 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 he ever solved that I think he probably shoot himself in the head. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I think that's I honestly do. I think he's I think that would be the end. I, I I don't think he would be he'd be like, I solved every single riddle. I know every single thing about everything. I think he put a gun to his head and be like, Life has no more meaning, I'm done. Coming soon from DC, uh, I am Suicide the Riddler. I am Suicide the Riddler, yeah. <laughs> uh, Tom, I, I, as a personal question, I want to ask you, what what is your favorite thing about writing Batman? What do you really dig about this job? Honestly, the, the, the best thing about Batman, no one's going to believe me when I say this, but it's it's the fans. I know that sounds like such like a, an NBA player at the halftime show giving some crappy answer. But, I, I mean, I've written a lot of books that I, I think are, are quality and not a ton of people read them. I don't mind that. But Batman fans, they'll always give you a chance as long as the word Batman is on it. Like, like I know I'm not writing into a void. I'm writing into a base. I'm writing into people who care about these characters and care passionately. And the stakes are always high for them. And, and that makes Batman a unique writing experience in comics. The fact that there is this fan base that cares about it. And um, it's the difference between... Uh, uh, walking on the ground and walking on a high wire. And when I write, I like write. I, I like walking on a high wire. Um, that's the best way to write is to write under pressure. So the fans putting the pressure on you. That's what makes it the best book in comics to write. Is that that's, also? Would you say the hardest thing about writing Batman is living up to that legacy, living up to that base? No, the hardest thing about writing Batman is what haven't you? What hasn't been done? No, there's two hard. There's two hard things about writing Batman. Number one, what hasn't been done. And number two, you read Frank Miller and realize you can't write better than that. <laughs> so, I mean, how, how, do you, how do you deal with that? How, what is your development process like? How do you um, come up with ideas for Batman that have never been done? I, I, I mean, there was literally a late night at Baltimore Comic Con, I think a year or two ago. Scott and I, you know, had a bottle of whiskey and no cups, just going back and forth, throwing ideas out. You know, uh, has Batman ever been turned into a monster? Yeah, Batman's been turned into a monster. Right, who hasn't worn the cows? Alfred worn the cow? Yeah, Alfred's been in the cow. Yeah. Like going like trying to throw the craziest things out there. I, I, I mean, the way I, I finally made peace with it, and it took me a while to sort of get my heads, is – is the, the one thing that I can bring to Batman that no one else can bring is myself. And that sounds stupid and arrogant, but it's all I have. Um, and that if, if I can write Batman um, in an emotional way that I don't think other people can write it. And so what I go for is stuff in, in, in the emotions that haven't been explored before. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I try to ignore the fact that Frank Miller would have done it better. <laughs> well, that's probably good advice for anybody that in the future wants to write Batman. Uh, Tom, uh, please tell our listeners where they can find you online, and also uh, what are some of the books you got coming out that they can check out. Uh, the best place to find me is Twitter. I'm Tom King TK, just my name and my initials. And uh, I got Batman 25. It's oversized. It's the War of Jokes and Riddles Part One of Eight uh, comes out this week. And uh, I hope you pick it up. I hope you love it. Um, for all you original Batman fans, there's there's uh, there's a little joke and riddle inside there. There's a puzzle to solve. Um, uh, there, there's there are two images that have references, and I want to see if people see what they're from. Interesting. Um, so I want to see who gets them. All right, everybody, you have a challenge out there. Tom King has designed a riddle. Let's see if you can beat his mind. Uh, <laughs> and for non for, for for fans of comics, I have a, a new series coming out uh, from. Mitch and I, who did a bunch of Batman issues with me, who did the rooftops and the Swamp Thing issue, uh, we're following up uh, that with this Mr. Miracle series that comes out in August, and I think it's the best thing I've ever written, so look out for that. Uh, yeah, Mitch Garrett's art is amazing, and uh, I, I have got a chance uh, to read it. Uh, somebody inside DC slipped me a copy of issue number one, and uh, I thought it was amazing. I think it is probably the best thing you guys have ever made together. That's, it's pretty amazing. Woo-hoo. So there you go. All right. Thanks for joining us today on Geek History Lesson, Tom. My pleasure, man. Those are great questions. I love talking about it. It's awesome.